the contract monad is like um, the standard way of dealing with contracts and off-chain code stuff um, so it basically um, means that we're gonna use contract monad to build transactions to run the the contract validators to balance transactions with something that also happens uh i'll explain the, the the process in details how how to build a transaction how to submit that transaction uh but the idea is to have a standard way of doing that and um as we know uh a monad can be used use it to represent side effects so in this case when we build a transaction it basically means that we are doing side effects and what i mean by side effects um is thing is changes that it, side effects are chains that propagates to the to the world to the physical world you know so when you are like submitting a transaction and and when you're like um computing things with data that comes from the outside world like it, when you're trying to to query some data on the blockchain when you're trying to uh get some oracle data and oracle is like external data in a centralized in the entity you know like uh imagine that you have like a server that has an api that servers um some kind of important information like um i don't know how much um fiat money for example you have in your in your account uh you would access this information uh from the real world from the physical world uh through a side effect um so side effect also means things that are not inside of the code and you are trying to get from the outside world you know so you can run this kind of side effects um which is not changing anything on the outside world but it's changing on something in in your in the code perspective you know in the, in the inside of the runtime so the monad uh have has this concept and contract represents this idea so contract is like a, a single way uh, of doing that of course it means that it means that we need to use contract for everything uh absolutely not um we we can use uh different monads and we can combine them together there are ways of doing that but this is not subject of this um uh of this lecture we 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 are focused on only uh building uh off chain stuff for cardano blockchain and i'll leave this for for another day uh so let's start with it so the contract monad is just a new type uh a new type of wrapper around query m which is a reader t on query inv env over f so what this means we have this new type um, type here which is parameterized by r row type and e type uh, and remember those guys here are kinds so what we have here is the kind of r and the kind of e so e should be the kind of a type so it represents a type and r represents a row type with another kind and I, i'll explain this better um uh, uh more forward but let's keep <clears throat> keep going so for contract new type we have this constructor contract query m extended r f e uh so what i'm i i'm mean doing this constructor here i'm wrapping this query m type no, with the same R, passing the same R type and the same E type, actually R row type and E type, and also passing this F. 
and in this query m extended we have the same arrow type we have m a new m here which represents in this case in this constructor the f type here so uh, the query m can have any m given that this m is of kind type to type so it basically means that um, Wherever we are, where, wherever, wherever type we are passing this M, uh, this type actually need to, actually, it 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 cannot be a type in the sense, but it should be a type to type. So it should have type to type kind. So uh, it basically means that the type we're passing here accepts accepts another type how this is possible uh, if you if you take a look at the f type you're gonna see the f type receives a new type um so f type here is missing uh, uh, a reference so f in this context uh, is a function in this sense more simple terms but is a function that receives a type and returns a type so f here it's missing something f is missing it's missing the 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 the, the type um the the specific type of f if you take a look at the f type signature uh, unfortunately i had not put this here uh, but let's take a look here let me open here I'll use this official F docs here in the pursuit documentation. You can see that F has kind type to type because it receives a T. An F of E is a synchronous computation with effects. So the computation may either be an error with an exception or produce a result of type E. So in this sense, this T represents this type here, you know, and F represents this type here. So uh, in this sense, when I pass F here, I'm passing a type of kind type to type. So it's missing this um, this value here, you know. Um, so just a small explanation on why we have the kind type to type here. And finally, E um, is also a type. Uh, we still don't know what rare R represents, what E is, but we have some conclusions so far. We know that F is a synchronous computation with effects. And we know that this F takes something, which is T0 in this example here, uh, which represents the result of running this F synchronous computation. So it represents the type of this computation. Um, and we can see in the type constructor for query MX10 type, which it receives a reader T over over um, a reader T on carry M, as we are saying here, a reader T on carry M over F. And why over F? Because we can see uh, in the constructor of contract here, the type from this M value here is being defined as F. So that's why we are saying that this uh, carry M extended is a reader T on carry m because it's the first argument here carry m over f because m here represents this f f type so uh we already know how to read the t works so i'm not uh, good very deep on that but in resume in resume um we can understand that as um, the contract uh, error type here 
define the type of this extra config field of the online line given value of fluidity. So because Kiriam, if you take a look at the Kiriam type here, we're gonna see that's the same R row type of the row type kind here, the same, okay? And we're gonna see it's just a record having some fields and all of those fields are very well defined. Nothing parameterized here, but we have a extra extra config field here, which is a record of this error row type. So this is just to specify the extra config field type, right? And because we have a reader T over that query, we can expect to have access to all those fields here through the carry M is because this is a monad transformer and you, you are probably familiar with monad transformer so far. So we know that we can access uh, the underline and monad uh, value of carry M. Okay. And we need to pass the air type here to fill this extra config type. Um, what else we have here? Let me see. We have the E and, and the M, which represents the F type here. So the E type here, we can conclude that the E type is the computation of carry M extend, which is the same computation of contract. So any value being returned on the contract um, monad, we assume this E type here. So it must be a type, it must be of a type, of kind type, and it must be of E type. So whatever we're going to use this contract type, we're going to, we we'll need to pass to define something. So if you're going to use contracting the type signature, you're going to need to define uh, these missing pieces, which are the, the extra config uh, row type of this record. So we know that extra config is a record, but we don't know what is the row type of this uh, record. And just to remember a few things, uh, because I was struggling with that before, a row type defines the labels of the record, the, the fields of the record, and the record is, is the value itself. So it's the value level, and the row type is one level uh, on, above that. So it's in the type level. So that's why it has a different uh, kind signature as row type instead of just type, you know. Um, and we're going to see on, on the real uh, world how this how this translates to something that we can build uh, very soon. So let's move forward. So here's an example of the contract monad. And um, we can see whatever we define a contract monad type, a contract type signature, we need to pass the extra config type or placeholder and the return value of the mod. So basically the same thing I said before. Um, so here we have an example of that. When I trying to create this function called submit transaction using the contract monad, I need to define extra config. And this remember, this extra config uh, is the type that going to be passed through through uh, the row type here, right? So this is the same the same guy. Uh, and the returning value of this contract is the transaction hash in this case, because I'm returning uh, our uh, transaction hash here, as we can see here. So we have the result from submit, uh, submitting a transaction, a, a pathetical transaction, um, and we are returning this value here. So uh, the return from this monad is this transaction ID Okay, and I'm showing here that we can ask for any time in the contract monad, we can ask for this extra config value uh, using ask, as we can see here. Uh, there's one thing that is probably incorrect here, uh, which is uh, the type of Kiriam actually is being returned. So I expect to have uh, cfg.extraconfig.foo and not 
CF shit dot foo. But uh, it's just a detail. Um, so to run this, we need to pass a valid config with extra config set to something. Um, so here I have this uh, main function, which is the normally the function we use to run things on pure script. And as we already know, our uh, main function is of monad, um, effect monad. And uh, we can launch um, a nav monad with this launch app function, it's, which is available both on the contract um, namespace, but also in the app namespace, it's the same thing. Uh, and this function is gonna run um, um, an effect monad. Uh, yeah, this this the, the, actually this function gonna run an affect monad. We can see here it receives app something. Um, so an app returns something, and a synchronous computation returns something, and it returns an effect. So because it returns an effect, and the result from that effect is unity, we can just place this function here. If we had something different here, because we have a launch off that returns something, it's just launch off, uh, launch off. Uh, we're gonna use effect uh, with the type returning type here of that effect. But this is not the case here. We are just discarding any value and not producing any side effect. Uh, I mean, not returning any uh, computation from side effect. Um, and here we have this run contract function which uh, we can see take a config params with that given arrow type so this represents this record uh, and this is actual type uh, that have many fields um, and this is actually the, the same type we can we saw here but uh, that one have probably more fields this is just the basic fields and here we have we need to define more few more fields with this config perms and we pass that all those perms uh, with the, the error defined uh, for extra config okay so what's gonna be this error in this context here when I'm trying to call this uh, it's gonna be a record uh, having error defined as the type of this record here, okay, which is gonna be extra config, like here. Um, so, and the second perm from that run contract function is the contract monad function. Uh, as we can see here, it receives a contract for the same error here which is the extra config and the returning value from this submit function right here but any function given function here should be this this e which uh, is the returning from the contract monad which gonna be transaction hash in this context here okay and we can see it returns a synchronous computation uh, it return the same E here, the same type of the E here and then we know that this is going to be because it's the same type, it's going to be the transaction hash so it basically means that we are running a synchronous computation uh, and you, you might be asking yourself what's the difference between effect and affect I have taught this subject before with halogen because to use halogen you need to to run app synchronous computation but in resume uh, the difference between both are effects are syn synchronous uh, side effects what it means it means that the code the the code run times block is blocked on each evaluation so the next step is going to start uh, only when the previous step have been comp computed. Uh, so it's like a serial way of doing side effects. And the AF monad on the other side 
allows to run parallel computations. Uh, that's the only difference. Um, they represent the same thing. They are side effects, but the AF monad um, represent those effects that are asynchronous and not synchronous. And what means to be an asynchronous computation? You just need to remember functions. Probably you are use it with if you're like Node developer, or JavaScript developer. You probably be use it with if you are like. Um, PHP, you might be for some kind of uh, structure before, but uh, you normally pass callbacks to your functions to run the synchronous computations. Uh, and it means that you're like running a function and passing the calling that function with uh, another function which is called callback inside of as argument of this function and inside of this function you are trying to to call the the the, the, the implementation of this function gonna call the callback so you know that at some point in the future this function is gonna reserve for something else uh, so it basically means that you are running parallel things just that in simple terms uh, if you're alive from JavaScript world, you can also think about that like as a promise. Uh, promise is something that you run and it keeps, run keeps running background and you can wait for that to solve, to do something else, for example, but you don't need to. You can just run uh, parallel stuff uh, while waiting for some promise to resolve, for example. Um, uh, but let's move forward. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, uh, finally, we have the how how we can use a validator. Uh, you probably already know that a validator is a kind of smart contract that returns some value, and that value is true or false. So uh, it can be something that have has been allowed or something that is not being allowed so if you have a smart contract like that uh, unlocks some given amount of ADA you could allow this transaction to happen so you could allow that the validator should return true for example or return false in case of you're not you're not allowed to to run this transaction and in the in the just to remember in the Cardano context context a uh, validator is just a smart contract that runs without errors um, like a, like a validator that is allowed that allows a transaction to happen in the cardano context it just need to be a contract that just runs and uh, and it not throws it not throw anything like uh, it not fails with some weird error message or something like that uh, but if you if your contract runs and it doesn't need to return, we can mimic that. But it doesn't need to return anything. But if your contract just runs and nothing happens, like it does, it does not change anything. It it does not compute anything. It does not return anything. It just runs. So it's a validator that allows the transactions to happen. This is simple terms to understand how this internally works. But we can mimic this returning true or false value so a uh, new type validator here is the, the type of this validator just to see what is that uh, validator is a wrapper around Pluto's script and uh, we can see here we are trying to submit calling this pure balance scene and submit transaction and let me explain that too uh, to build a, a, a transaction with off chain code you have some kind of steps to do mostly it happens on 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 the pluto side with pab but it's not so uh, clear as we have it's not so clear how this works internally as as it is when we're trying to build to to use ctl here um we need we have those these four steps first we need to build the transaction and this also when happens when we are trying to build transactions with Cardano CLI you which you probably have seen before 
and this but um you need to build the transaction and you need to balance the transaction so what is build you need to build a file that gonna represent your transaction that's that it's a lie it's a serialized file uh in the cardano cli context but here we are keeping everything on the memory we don't need to save anything but it basically means that we are need we need first to build the transaction which gonna serialize some some data uh, we need to balance the inputs and outputs of these transactions um, so if you have like a correct law uh, if you have like uh, if you have like just one input and you have many inputs and we need to split values between those inputs and outputs if you need uh, to, to compute fees and all those uh, steps uh, we are grouped that in the single operation called balance and this is the like the holy grail of uh, right now is the holy grail of uh, building stuff on front end for for Cardano because to balance transactions you need to have some way of carrying the, the blockchain and carrying the wallet so this is the most complex uh, thing to do and it's for free so over here on ctl you know you don't need to do that manually we have a function that magically do that for you so you just need to be worried uh, the same way we we do in pab pab uh, in in pluto's option code plus tx actually not pab but in plutus tx which is the library to build off chain stuff for haskell uh if you're a plutus pioneer you probably know that uh we don't need to worry worry about how to organize values uh what what utex o's i need to build what utex o is gonna be what output of what you text oh you don't need to organize all that thing all the all those guys manually yeah um it happens automatically but here in, in, in ctl we have just a function to do the same thing but we need to call a function to do that just that uh so this is like a step of doing that so we have the transaction then we need to balance inputs and outputs to correspond to our requirements on trying to build these transactions uh you're gonna understand that in details in the very soon um then we have the third step which is sign the transaction so given that i have the transaction i created that uh, i need to sign that with a private key to um say that i am actually who who is the who is the allow the, the allowed guy to to do that so i'm like an uh it's like the the authority of okay i am i am myself <laughs> no i'm not something someone else uh then finally we need to submit this transaction so everything happens in this as an example here with just a single function but we can split all single operation uh so you can see that how that happens internally uh so here we have the validator so we are like getting the validator uh which in the end is gonna be a function, you know, a function that's gonna be called by this build balancing send and submit transaction. Think about that like a uh, callback function. So it's a callback function that's gonna return some value, and we don't know what, but you don't need to care. Uh, so validate returns that, uh, and we build this lookups variable, and this is really nice lookups uh are a way to call functions that defines how to look up for values just like a star a standard building plot stuff and it's a really nice way i i i, I like this the way of doing things because it's it makes clear uh the behavior of the 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 uh what are trying to achieve you know it's like declarative so you declare that you are building a, a transaction and you're, you're declaring that the function should look up um the function lookups 
um, so the function things that need to be looked for, you no, know, or uh, the lookups, uh, the right term, the lookups uh, have a validator. So it basically means that uh, whatever is happening to be the transaction, this validator must be run and must, must pass. Basically that. And we need to wrap this validator with the, the lockup types and things like that. So we use this uh, validator function from this is uh, script lockups type. So we have a specific uh, a specific namespace that have many functions that can be used as lockups. One of them is validator, uh, which takes a, a, a Plutus script. Um, actually which takes a validator which wraps that puts the script and they're gonna run the script to validate the transaction not and uh as we're gonna see in the future lookups are monoids so you can just append them together so i can append a validator with um something else like if you have two kinds of validator for example i we don't have that but if you if you would have like if you had that we could append one validator with another one and run both validators to validate the transaction, for example. But we have other kinds of validators. So I'm going to show that in the future. Oh, sorry, not validate, but lookups. Um, and finally, we have the constraints. Constraints. Uh, I'll explain that better um, after this slide. But <coughs> uh, constraints are like requirements to to your transaction so while lookups are like fulfillment things like you need to fulfill data uh on the to, to build the transaction so it basically means where i should look for things that's what lookups are uh, constraints on the other side is like um what your transaction should do so uh your transaction should have should spend this value. Your transaction should send this value to something someone else. Uh, for who uh, it should be valid after this time, before this time. So constraints on the transaction. Uh, I can explain that in details uh, uh, very soon. So finally, we have this validator here that I showed before. And here I'm, I'm showing how to implement this two validator function that should return a validator, right? So it should return either error or validator. And why error? Because we are trying to pass, parse something. Um, remember, the, the, the script is a serialized form. So uh, as we're going to see very soon, uh, the, con the, 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 the smart contract is written in Plutus file, and this file is serialized. You just, I probably saw that uh, before when trying to build Cardano CLI transactions. Uh, this Plutus file is serialized, so it can fail when trying to parse this, uh, this file. So that's why we need to have either here to handle those uh, edge cases where the, the parsing fails. And we need to use this arrow type to match the monad error of contract this way <coughs> uh, we can just pass um we can just lift actually the contract here uh to to, to this contract monad here and i will show that very soon how it works but it basically allows us to lift this uh, to validator either wrapping some string to throw whatever uh whatever error happens you know well, well, yeah we can lift that to this contract monad um and how to implement this function we just uh run this some some parse script function and remember our parse here should return a plot script why because we are wrapping so this is actually our function if you're not seen that before it allow it allow us to do the same thing as calling the type constructor of this new type all new types have instance for new type 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 class which allow us to wrap values on that new type type so it's basically a general way of calling um calling type construct so think about that like 
just replace wrap here with validator type constructor you have the same the same behavior so we are liking uh getting the return from parse script which because uh wrap takes puts the script here should be puts the script so we have parse script that should return puts the script somewhere and we need to create this function as we can see here so parse script uh, also can return either error or puts script as we can see here and uh, it's more complicated and I'll explain details how this works but just a back clear here to to show you that I, we are using map here it's because uh, parse script is expected to also return either so because either is um, a functor we can map functions over this functor for the for the value which is which is the, the rightful value the right value you know the validator in this case uh, or the actually the put script in this case for parse script you can see here uh, let's let's start with the rightful value here the most right right value here let's 